So this is a hiker and they've been for a short walk. What they've done is they've gone two kilometres east, three and a half kilometres north, another kilometre east and then 1.5 kilometres south. Bit of a strange walk, I suppose, just following these bearings. But there we go. And uh, we need to work out two things. The total distance travelled, which is actually how far their legs have moved, and also the final displacement, which is how far away they are and in what direction they are from their starting position. So to work out the total distance moved, first of all, all we need to do is add up these individual distances. So that's going to be equal to 2.0 plus 3.5 plus 1.0 plus 1.5 and that's equal to 8.0, and I'm just going to leave my unit as a kilometre. So they've gone 8 kilometres, just about 5 miles, as they've gone for that walk. But now we need to work out the final displacement. And to work this out, what I'm going to do is um, just a, a bit of a sketch to kind of work out, um, you know, the start to the end position. I'm just going to use the pencil and ruler and I'm just going to, even though it's not a scale drawing, I'm going to say that two centimetres is equal to a kilometre. So if they went two kilometres east, that's four centimetres. They then went north, uh, three and a half kilometres, so that's seven centimetres. If I just, oh, do you know what, I've gone over that, but never mind. So they've gone seven centimetres up to there. Then they've gone a kilometre east, if I just move this out of the way. Uh, so a kilometre east is two centimetres along, and then they've gone 1.5 kilometres south, which is going to be three centimetres. Okay, so that is my diagram. They started here and they ended here. So what we have there is a bit of a, I guess, a kind of vector diagram. I'm also just going to join up the start and the end positions, because this is what we're interested in now. This is the displacement. Now, um, if I just put some numbers on, we know that this length here is 2.0, that length is 1.0. Uh, going up, it goes 3.5 and then 1.5. Now, what I can see here is that to work out this distance, I could do it by measuring the line. And if I did it, even though this isn't, is just a rough diagram, it's just over seven. So that's gonna be about just over three and a half kilometers. So that's the rough value that I'm trying to get to. But I'm gonna use a bit of mathematics, a bit of trigonometry and Pythagoras to work it out. Now, if they started here and ended here, I can actually see that there's a bit of a right angle triangle forming. So I'm just gonna go over that in a red pen. So that's my triangle drawn in. I'm gonna put a right angle there. Now, if that's two kilometers and that's one kilometer, then the total length of that bottom side is gonna be equal to three kilometers. And if we go up three and a half and come back down 1.5, then this is going to be equal to 2.0. And the other thing I'm just going to label on this is the fact that we've got an angle, uh, maybe theta in here. This is going to be my hypotenuse. This is going to be my opposite side. And that's going to be my adjacent side. So that might come in useful later on. So first of all, we want to find out the distance, which is the hypotenuse. Now to work that out, we're going to use Pythagoras and say that a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared. And that means a, this uh, long side here, little a, is going to be equal to the square root of um, 3 squared plus 2 squared, which is the uh, same as the square root of 9 plus 13. And that means that's equal to 3.60 kilometres, which is what we thought it might be when I said it'd just be a bit bigger than 3.5. So their total displacement is 3.6 kilometres, but yet their total distance was 8.0 kilometres. Now, this is the thing that people often forget when it comes to displacement, is you know not only need to have a size, but also a direction. We're going to work out theta here. Now, um, we know all of these sides, but I'm going to look at the opposite and the adjacent side. And uh, I'm, I'm just going to try and remember this, that we've got Sokotoa. Now, I'm going to use the opposite and the adjacent side, and that means I'm going to use tan. So what we can say is that tan theta is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. And that means theta is going to be inverse of tan of the opposite side, which is 2.0, divided by the adjacent side, which is 3.0. I could put that into my calculator. And that means we've got inverse tan of 2 divided by 3, close the bracket. And that gives an answer equal to 33.7 degrees. Now, that's fine. You can say it's 33 0.7 degrees uh, north of east, but sometimes it's actually more useful to think about the bearing. Uh, I'm just going to call this angle alpha. 
Sometimes it's more useful to, useful to think of the angle alpha because then that gives you a bearing. And that's useful when it comes to looking at things with directions, especially east, west, north and south. So um, if this is a right angle and that's 33.7, the angle alpha that we're interested in is going to be equal to 90 take away 33.7, which is 56.3. And I suppose, probably like my raw data, I can give this to two um, significant figures. And therefore, I can say that the angle is going to be equal to a bearing of 0, 0,56 degrees. So now the actual displacement, the final answer, is that it's a displacement of 3.6 kilometres at an angle of 0, 0,56 degrees. Now that's quite involved, that's using the mathematics. We could have done it using a protractor, and that's often a nice way if you get a nice scale drawing. But this just shows the difference between displacement and distance.